Now on Mackie and Judd. You wanted better charts that you could see the fine print on. The pie chart of praise. We should be singing his praises. All right, this is this is going to be very difficult for Judd Zolgad here because I think I think <laughs> you're you're probably a little more red flag panicky about the bad things that happened over the weekend than Declan and I. Declan and I are just out drinking seltzers and yep. it, listen, just peace, love, and baseball, man. Whether whether Donaldson's out for you know. 14 days or whether he's out for the rest of his career Declan and I are just loving the baseball's back so right we're gonna go with the pie chart of praise here for the twins taking two out of three mm-hmm. and uh, bouncing back from a debacle late inning meltdown in game one against the Brewers we'll start with Judd what is your twins take the opening series against the Brewers pie chart of praise the rock knows how you feel about pie all right Starting from the bottom, pie chart of praise. And by the way, I'm not panicky here. I'm not panicky. I I just I just see you know what I just it's the problem is I don't believe I don't believe what the twins tell us about injuries. So I'm ske- I'm skeptical. That's the word. I'm skeptical. Let's see here. Starting at the bottom, ten percent. Ten percent goes to the starter on Sunday. Michael Pineda. Michael Pineda threw a very nice game. He was, he was, you know what? He is reliable if he's not suspended. He's very, <laughs> he is. Well, I mean, Rocco was t- talking about he's, he's reliable and you can always count on Big Mike. And I was going to say, how about that one time that he was pitching super well and in September got pinched for the rest of the season? Yeah. That's not reliable, Rocco. <laughs> but anyway, Big Mike gets 10%. 10%. Also, in fairness, goes to a guy who had a very nice series and a very strong game on Sunday. And this is part of, uh, because I was very concerned about this. I shared this concern before opening day last week. Max Kepler. Max Kepler came back, and I guess what Kepler said was, and who knows if this is true or not. He said, I was trying a bunch of different stuff in spring training, but now I'm back to the old Max because that did not work, where I believe he had two or three hits in the entire spring. So 10%. Max Kepler, he looked good. He looked good at the plate. He certainly did not look lost, and it was certainly not what I feared. All right, that's 20%. 10% goes to Byron Buxton, because before he left with with a mysterious, I guess at this point, non-COVID-related illness, Buxton homered in game one on Thursday, hit an absolutely crucial home run on Saturday. Among my statements before he had to leave was, this is finally the Buxton that we've been waiting for. Like at the plate, he look, right now at the plate, he looks fantastic. Like he looks like the guy that for years we were like, what, what's with his leg kick now, right? And, and you know, go back three years. Everyone and their brother was telling Byron what to do at the plate and Byron would try and do it and then he would adapt this and then he would do this and then Torrey would come along, oh, no, no, do this. Byron Buxton right now at the plate has an approach. He looks great. He's got power. Uh, also, before he left the game on Sunday, I believe it was in the first, he doubled Byron Buxton 10%. Kudos to you. 20%. Luis Arise. Luis Arise, leadoff spot, is an on-base machine right now. And this goes back to the, the way he's playing, as we talked about in statements to me. This looks like the Arise who got right or wrong compared to Carew. Like, if you look at how the approach and how he looks and the comfort and and his ability to work counts, he, this was a great three-game start. And so he, he gets 20%. So now I'm at, what, 10, 20, 30, 50, 20%, up to 70, Jose Barrios. That start on Saturday was awesome. And that pitching duel was great. How much fun was that to watch? Two starters, toe-to-toe. Yes, they both got pulled, but nonetheless, what they both get, gave us, and I think it, I think it was 11 strikeouts on the Brewers' side, 12 strikeouts for Barrios, was absolutely baseball theater at its best. I love that stuff. 20% Barrios, great start. And 30%, so my biggest piece of pie this might surprise you because it's it blew up a little bit on Thursday, but overall, the bullpen. 
The bullpen was was damn good. In fact, let's see here. I did the stats. So in the last two games, I love it. just scoring these games. Yep, last two games uh, on Saturday and Sunday, the bullpen seven seven in innings pitched, two hits, a run, two walks, ten strikeouts in eleven and two thirds over the three games, fourteen strikeouts. So. 30% to the bullpen, 20% to Arise, 20% to Barrios, 10% to Kepler, 10% to Buxton, and 10% to Michael Pineda. The Rock knows how you feel about pie. I like. It. I think. Uh, I'm, I think we're probably going to have some overlapping themes in our pie charts here. By the way, sure. Mackie and Judd talking Twins every single day, breaking Twins games down like they are football games. If you want Twins discussions, the Mackie and Judd podcast feed and the Score North YouTube channel are the places for you. And my pie chart is presented by our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. Not only has Federated been protecting business owners in the state of Minnesota for over 100 years, but they have had close partnerships with many Minnesota sports teams. And so if you're a Minnesota sports fan and a business owner all in one, Federated is the company for you. You can find a full list of industries Federated protects at federatedinsurance.com. I don't think they help with hamstring and calf risk (laughs) management. Maybe they should. Maybe they should look into. Uh, I was going to say, business. can they do we'll that? See. I think they should. We'll see. So, uh, <laughs> federatedinsurance.com. Click on My Shield or uh, download the Federated Insurance app. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect your. Rock knows how you feel about pie. All right, I have five slices of pie. Pie chart of praise for the twins here. Wow. That's a lot for you. Yeah, wow. It is. Let's give ten percent to Rocco Baldelli. For his ability to foresee potential hurdles before they pop up as a great string-pulling manager. The fact that Rocco can look at six no-hits, near-perfect innings from Jose Barrios and say, everybody wants me to leave him in and go for the no-hitter. But I know that he was really bad third time through the order last year. Let's bring in Taylor Rogers to keep the momentum going, to tack on three more strikeouts. People are going to criticize me. People are going to criticize me, Rocco Baldelli, because they feel like I'm I'm pulling the trigger too early on getting Jose Barrios out of this game. Let him come out, come out there for the 7th and the 8th and see if he can stretch the no-hitter. But Rocco Baldelli, 10% for just knowing what strings to pull at the right time. Puppet master. <laughs> Absolute uh, puppet master. I'm going to go 10% to spring training numbers meaning nothing. Max yep, Kepler that- with four hits. <laughs> You're right. More He had more hits this series than he did in a month and a half in spring training. Uh, 10% to Luis Arise being just an amazing Swiss Army Knife ninja of a baseball player. He can play any position. He can just cut, sort of, hey, uh, something changed. We need you to help fix it. And he can just sort of be plugged into any place. And he, he was going to be the, the, the starting left fielder, and now he's going to play third base for a while. Uh-huh. So Luis Arise. 20% to Byron Buxton before the mysterious illness, clearly breaking out to start the year here. Looks more comfortable He's he's the, the power is there. The speed is still there. Everything. And then 50 percent of my pie chart of praise to the combination of Jose Barrios and Mike Pineda. Barrios probably gets a little more of that pie because he was more lights out. But uh, big Mike Pineda as a reliable number three starter laying the groundwork for the twins to win those two games against the Brewers. So Rocco, the puppet master. <laughs> <laughs> Spring training numbers meaning nothing. Luis Arise, Byron Buxton, and the two starting pitchers get to eat my pie chart of praise. The Rock knows right. how you feel about pie. I will start with uh, just I have three pieces of pie. Just three pieces of pie, two players, and then also one more all encompassing thing. So I'm going to start 10% of my pie. Goes to Max Kepler for a lot of reasons we just laid out. A horrible spring, but it turns out it didn't matter at all. He had uh, a home run, he had an extra base hit. He's fine. Max Kepler is absolutely fine, people. You didn't need to freak out. He's okay. He's a good right fielder, too. I don't want him to, I don't like him having to play center. I know Jake Cave will be in center when the Twins play on the Tigers on Monday, which is just makes me want to jump off a building. Oh. At the same time, I like what Max Kepler does at the plate. And, uh, and yes, he had a good series, so 10% of my pie. 20% of the pie to Luis Arise. That's my best round. I, I, can, I can do it pretty that's good. Not bad. Yeah. That's better than Arise. Oh, no, that's it. good. It, it's Ooh, not that's, bad. Yeah. No, a, no, dude, that's really good. I think good. we need an Arise off again. I think oh, we need you've got call, it. Let's call him up. What is he on at 2 o'clock today? We'll, we'll just Actually, call him up and we'll have a... Do you think he'd we'll jump on... If I send him a text, do you think he would... Let me just send him a text while you go through your... Okay. Picture. Boom. All right, Luis Arise. 20% of my pie. He had an awesome start to the season, hitting 500, 
on base machine right now. Hard hit rate is up at 55. percent His exit velocity is at 96 look miles you, an hour. Look at, you bring look in at the all. Facts. I'm, bringing, I'm bringing the nerds. Bring in the facts. Right now. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Football. There you go. Right there. there it is. Right. I love what you're doing the right 55% now. The 55 percent hard hit rate compared to league average is 39. percent So he's mm-hmm. absolutely slobbering the ball. It's great to see Luis rise 20 percent of my pie. And then finally, 70%, my biggest chunk of pie, just goes to pitching. I'm calling it pitching. I know Jose Brios was just masterful, but, 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 but the bullpen was good. You Pineda was down. good. No, 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 no. It all, it's all in one stew of I pie. Feel like you, I feel like your arise work was so all-encompassing that you didn't have the you didn't have the oomph to get through the pitching break. Down. No, no, no. I, I mean, Brios, what? He was all, no, almost yeah, a no-hitter. The hitter. bullpen, we got to talk about the bullpen. Pineda bullpen was great. Yep, the, yep, yep, the bullpen was great. No, I, all, I don't know about it's this. It's all one encompassing thing. It, it's all one encompassing pitchers. They get 70% <laughs> of the pie. The pitching was fantastic. I don't know about this one. It was fantastic. It was okay, and even, I'll even say this, because I, lo- you know how much I love Mon Thursday seeing Josh Hader just absolutely Shove on uh, uh, with with a pitch striking Lo- out the side on you ten love pitches. Wisconsin athletes. I lo- no, I love Josh Hader. No, and you love the Packers. Well, yeah, that okay. Maybe I do like. Wisconsin. Like you love Wisconsin athletes. Maybe it's fine. Just admit to it. Just move. Maybe there, I dude. do. What are you doing? Yeah. yeah. I, I, all right. See you later. Uh, we'll have we'll, we'll be all three different states. It'll be great. Uh, so yeah, last chunk of pie seventy percent. So my pie chart of praise Kepler ten percent, Luisa Rise twenty percent, and then uh, pitching gets seventy percent on my pie chart of praise. Can I say just another observation from that series? And, and this might actually spawn a Mount Rushmore discussion. Dan Vogelbach is the most oh. Brewers-looking Brewers player I have ever seen. And that's have you saying seen, something. The Brewers have, have had ever, a lot of Brewers-looking players. I was going to say, I was going to say, Lee, Fielder. Gorman, go look up Gorman Thomas right now. Gorman Thomas is the most Brewers. Vo, Vogelbach's good. Gorman Thomas, though, because you got the facial hair in play, the scraggly hair and the gut. Gorman Thomas is the most Brewers player ever. I did. You know, Tim McNiff hit me up over the head. He's like, oh, are you too young to remember Gorman Thomas? Well, yeah, yes, Gorman he played Thomas. in the 70s. Gorman the Thomas, 80s. 80s. Yeah, but go look up Gorman Thomas. Like, if, if you could put together an all Brewers looking team, Vogelbach for sure. I think I've got the, Gorman Thomas. Are you going? Are you going like around the diamond here or Mount Rushmore? You could probably <laughs> you could probably do it both ways, right? You could probably yeah, you, you could do both. I, I mean, they've, I, had lot, they've had a lot of guys that look like they, they consume brats and beer. Dude, like Dan Vogelbach literally looks like a bratwurst with cleats and a bat. Like he walks up, he's got a hat on. Yep. He, he looks like you could you could run that sausage race with the four sausages and Dan Vogelbach, and nobody would know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> um, I think the Mount Rushmore of br- most Brewers-looking players ever, mm-hmm. I think Vogelbach's on it. You're right about Gorman Thomas. I did a little. I'm just looking at it right now. It's yeah, hilarious. he's a he's George Washington, I think. John Jaha. John oh, John Jaha. Jaha. People are saying from the 90s. John Jaha. Yeah, that's a good one. And, and I think I think Prince Fielder, man, Prince Fielder. Oh, oh that's a Prince good one Fielder too. Has to be on there. Yeah. Now, Prince Fielder claimed to be a vegetarian. A vegetarian yeah. for a few years. Like, did he drink ranch dressing for with every salad? Like, what? That was my question. Oh. So, so the first time that I read that he had changed his diet, okay, I went to a Twins Brewers game at the Metrodome, and I thought, oh my God, he's going to be really thin now, you know, because he's always been a big guy, and now, you know, he didn't look different at all. Like, it, it looked like the same guy. I'm like, hold on a second. How can you remain that big and not, you know, eat meat? Burgers are out, right? The whole thing. I guess vegetarian bread, lifestyle. Exactly like, like if you're a vegetarian, you, you, could just just, you could eat like a loaf of bread every day, I suppose. Prince Fielder's a perfect one, though. That's a great one. <laughs> I didn't think of him. I should have. Yeah. If you have other, I, you know, I would say Jeff Jenkins and Jeremy Burnitz also fit the bill. Oh, my God. You guys have to see this picture of. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a picture of Dan Vogelbach in the minor leagues here. Just give All me right. a second. Um, but I think. If you were to play this game all throughout, like Richie Sexton sort of looks, but yeah. he's not fat. Like he just he just yeah. sort of looks. All right, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or all not right. because it's kind of small. But the picture I'm about to show you here on our YouTube channel is Dan Vogelbach, probably like eight years ago, as a minor league player. And uh, this is what Declan would look like if you weighed 150 more pounds, more than, pounds than he currently yes. weighs. Yeah. Can you guys see this? Oh my I don't god! Know if I can zoom in on this. Oh my! Oh, this well, is he's, he's chunky. Oh yeah! I well, mean, his he... his entire yeah yeah, it's oh. pretty aggressive. That's a there great face. There you go. There you go. 
Oh my god. <laughs> Man, he's a, that's he's a, ball a baby player. there too. That's a ball player. I mean, he yeah. he must have been born checked in at 21 pounds, right? I mean, he looks like he like ate the day Jeremy Burnett's and Jeff Jenkins. Can you play guard? Jenkins? Jenkins looks a lot like Favre. If you go he look does, at a yeah. Jenkins picture, he looks a lot like Brett Favre. I think if you spend enough time in Wisconsin, everyone just sort of starts to look like Brett Favre. Yeah. Like even the women. Like everyone just starts yeah. to look like if you've if you've lived in Wisconsin for 15, 20, 25 years, everyone well, that, just did, and everyone starts to wear okay. cargo shorts and Ben Sheets jerseys. Like everyone just starts to look the same. It's the big, the it's it's the big guys. Pie. They're the yeah. best. So anyhow, uh, that is your pie chart of praise here. Talking Twins on Mackie and Judd. And you, just a cheap plug, you guys and Jake DePew, the artist formerly known as the Curse of Punto on Twitter, yes. are going to break it down even further here. And then the Twins and the Tigers. Although it's, it's always funny, too, when the White Sox just hilariously melt down. Like, they come all the way back. They, they were like, I want to say they were like 0 for 15 or something with runners on base at one point in that game last night, Sunday Night Baseball. Yeah. And because the Angels are just a dumpster fire in every way except Mike Trout. <laughs> <laughs> they made a bunch of errors and stuff. And so the White Sox crept back in and then, boom, walk off home run to slap them upside the head. And they're one and three to start the year. The key thing was the closer stays in the bullpen unless it's a safe situation. Tony La Russa ain't going to use the closer unless it's a save. And that was not a save. This is honestly not going to work. Like, this is not going to work. Tony is so far. I mean, he is stuck. He is stuck in 1992. And he ain't coming out. It's great news for the Twins. It, it really is. It absolutely is. But, I mean, he is going to to sabotage them in games, I think, repeatedly. And he's in his mind, he's like, but this is but this is me. It's the right move, right? <laughs> yeah. Quick bet. When does, does Donaldson come back? I'm saying May 4th. Um, wow. Honestly... I think it's later than that. Okay. I don't think it's April, that's for sure. I think it's later than that. I mean, we're a month away from May 4th right now. It's a hamstring. A okay, give um, me a date. I would say closer to like May 15th or uh, my birthday, May 20th. I would If, he, if he's back by my May birthday, 20th? May 20th. <laughs> Declan? I'll say April 30th. I'm just going to cut it. I'm going to put it in April. I'll be lost no, for the I'll, season I'll if he does that. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Yeah. April I think 30th. part of it is I think they're going to be good know. without him. Like, I think they're, they're good enough to win games without him, and especially yeah. if Buxton comes back from whatever mysterious illness he had. <laughs> so I don't think there's going to be a need to, like, desperately rush him back. Now, if they dip a few games below 500 and he might start to get the itch to say, I got to come save this thing, then we might be talking. So I think they're going to talk sense into him if they're playing well and say, dude, we're not going to do this thing we did last year where – you decide you're going to play. Like you, we really only need you for October. So just yeah, be smart about this. What really concerns me though is did did you see in the Zoom call he did um, on Saturday? I believe he basically talked about. So when, when he talked about, I think it was at the start of spring training that he had that he had learned how to run differently, which yeah. which scared me. He basically now said that he was was trying to transfer more of the stress to his hamstrings to keep it off his calves. Um, this is no. why I don't like you can't. I don't think you can do this. Like how I don't do think like, that, we should. That should be an athlete challenge for Judd. How, no. how can we transfer yeah, more weight, hurt. more onus, no. and stress on the hamstrings or the glutes? But my problem with that is. He's 35 years old. Like, he's not a kid. I, I just think if you put too much pressure on any one thing, it's going to give, right? You know what baseball needs? We're talking about ways to fix baseball. Courtesy one, one player on each team just gets to use a golf cart. You know, you hit the ball. It's just it's just sitting oh, next Nelson to the baseline. Oh, Nelson Cruz would have that. No, Nelly yeah, would be like, it. that's me, man. No, no, no. Well, he doesn't need it as much as Josh Donaldson does. <laughs> yeah, you're right, it's but true. he might he might politic for it. <laughs> Jim Tomey, Jim Tomey basically spent the last five years power walking around the bases. Like he'd hit, a, he'd smoke a ball to the gap. You know and what? He would though? Just, he'd just power walk his way. You just hit it. That that's exactly. They have to tell Josh if the ball does not leave the ballpark, it's a single. Or tease it. Mm-hmm. Just or tease it. Just literally walk to first base and stand there. Then, I really think that's. I think that might be it. But then I hate what do you, to say but, it. But then what do you do? So even if you're on first base, okay, someone rips a ball down the right field line. Like now you got to go first to third. 
You got you're gonna have to turn it on at some point. You can't just like not run. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know what the fix is. What if you became the first guy to really not run? <laughs> Guys, balls in the right field corner. I can probably get to third base by just walking. Have you seen those like professional? You're right, power walking. I think there's a power walking Olympic event. I've seen like these. Yes. High end. Have you guys seen those? <laughs> it exists. It's yes, nuts. It's, um, it's awful. Yeah, I think like, I, and I think How's the rule you have to have like one heel at on the yes. ground at all times. Mm-hmm. There's actually a phenomenal <laughs> episode of Malcolm in the Middle where Brian Cranston is like going through a power walking phase, and he has this ridiculous suit. If you just Google Malcolm in the Middle power walking, you'll find a, an amazing picture of Brian Cranston with the most ridiculous outfit. Yes, it's power walk. I actually, I I pride myself on my power walking. Like sure. I, I, wow. I am on a mission when I walk. Like state fair, crowded target field. Good luck. Like I will bulldoze over you. Get out of my way. Um. So I actually would athlete challenge. Let's get me into power walking. I'll do it. You can work with Josh. Yeah. That's it. Me and Josh. Declan Goff, power walking coach. Amazing. Yep. Think about he, it. He just he's he's on second base to start extra innings, and someone rips a ball to the right center field gap, and he's power walking his way for a play at the plate. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. We don't want any plays at the plate. We don't want any plays at the plate. <clears throat> Amazing. Um, by the way, another shout out to to our friends at PXG Minneapolis. So, uh, listen, if you're if 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 you're sensing golf season here, and you maybe a lot of you have already dabbled. PXG Minneapolis is a golfer's paradise. The new Gen 4 clubs have arrived. Drivers, fairways, hybrids, irons. These are PXG's flagship clubs. Hands down the best performing clubs PXG has ever made, which is saying something. They make really, really good clubs. So uh, check those out and uh, let us know what you think of PXG Minneapolis in Southdale Center. Let us know what you think of some of the swag, the uh, spring and summer apparel that just arrived in store. PXG.com slash Minneapolis. And uh, that is our pie chart of praise. That's talking twins here today on this Monday. Don't forget a lot of the bonus episodes. Now we've got the, sort of mapped out throughout the week the main episodes of Mackie and Judd. But then bonus talking twins on Monday. We've got um, on the podcast feed Royce Unchained and Rap with Royce episodes. Judd's hockey show. Bonus scoop with Doogie. So we uh, we're on our A game right now on the Mackie and Judd <laughs> podcast feed. Download record for March. We're power walking. Check it out. That's right. We are playing within ourselves on the Mackie and Judd podcast feed. Oh. And that's a wrap today. We'll see you guys. The Rock knows how you feel about pop.